You know, today is a special day for many reasons. You know, I'm so thankful that the name of Jesus gives us freedom. But also today is June 19th or Juneteenth. And that is the day that commemorates that the enslaved people in the United States were free. You know, that day in, yes, amen. That day in 1865, the news of their freedom finally reached the slaves in Galveston, Texas, two years after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And we just wanna honor this day. And uh, there's a video that I just want us to watch because we would be remiss if we didn't honor this day and honor the freedom that this day brings. So let's watch this video. Freedom. Liberation, Emancipation, Juneteenth, a time to remember what was and to dream about what could be, a time to learn about our history and plan for a better future together, a time to recognize and honor our differences and refuse to ignore them. A time to rejoice in the beauty of diversity and to celebrate our common humanity. A time to pray for equity, fairness, progress, and justice. A time to consider how far we've come and take another step forward together. You know, I'm so thankful for this day and the freedom that it represents and the unity that it represents, but also the diversity that we have um, with each other. And we can recognize that and celebrate that we are unified, but we're also diverse. And you know, our unity truly comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all washed in the blood of Jesus, but yet God is so awesome that he created unity but he also created diversity. And that's such a special gift that he gave us. So let's not forget to celebrate Juneteenth today. Amen. Well, today is another special day for another reason, and that is it is my 23rd wedding anniversary. So happy anniversary, babe. 23 wonderful years. And then finally, it is also Father's Day. <laughs> Lots of stuff going on today. So I would like for all the fathers in the room to stand, please. We just want to give you a big hand and celebrate you. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, Father's Day um, is a time just to reflect on the fathers in our life. And you know, I know for some this day can bring some mixed emotions. Um, maybe your father has already gone on to their heavenly home, as my precious father-in-law has. Um, but you know, today, I know that those who have gone on ahead to their heavenly home would not want us to be sad. But they, want to, they would want us to reflect back on the good times and the good memories that we had well, they were here on the earth, knowing that one day we will see them again and be reunited. 
You know, and for some of you, it may bring mixed emotions because maybe you had an absent father. You know, according to the U.S. Um, Census Bureau from 2018, 19.5 million children, more than one in four, live without a father in the home. Or maybe your father was in the home, but they were an alcoholic or a workaholic or Maybe they simply just never had the time for you. And so it can bring about some mixed emotions. You know, if that's the case, um, I invite you today to learn from my father if you didn't have a good father or a father that you could count on. Um, Because I'm going to talk about some lessons that my father taught me. And so I invite you just to learn from him. You know, my dad... um, He wasn't a perfect dad, but he was a really, really good one, pretty darn close. You know what I'm saying? Um, He was was always such a good dad, and I loved holding his hand. That's one thing that I remember growing up. Wherever we went, wherever we walked, I just wanted to hold his hand, and just because it made me feel so safe, and I knew with him that I was safe. Um, You know, he also taught me how to be an amazing boy mom. So my dad, if you know my dad at all, he lives and breathes sports, like every sport, like he loves them all. And so um, I remember being a little girl and he would be watching football in his recliner and I would climb up on his lap and I would watch football with him, but we didn't just watch football together. He would say, all right, Denise, you know, you see that guy right there with the ball? This is what he's going to do, and he's the quarterback, and he's going to pass it to the wide wide receiver, and you see those guys lined up, those three guys lined up there? They're going to run trips. I mean, he taught me all the plays. He taught me all the motions that the ref was doing. You know, he just taught me about sports and really prepared me to be a boy mom. Um, because little did I know I was going to have two sons. Uh, But, you know, my dad, he taught me a lot with his words, but I also learned so much from his actions. And, you know, I truly believe that the best dads teach us not only with our words, but also with their actions, because it is very easy to say the right thing, but it takes a lot of determination and moral to actually do the right thing. And so I believe that the greatest fathers are able to live out those things that they say. And so I'm just going to talk a little bit today about four lessons that my dad taught me. There's so many. I could be here all day long talking about that, but I chose four. Um, And these lessons, he taught me both not in the natural, but also in the supernatural. Because anyone that knows my dad knows one of his favorite sayings is the natural and the supernatural coming together makes the explosive force for God. And so in these lessons, he taught me them both naturally and both supernaturally. So the first thing my dad taught me is how to forgive. You know, my dad is the most forgiving person I've ever met. It's actually one of the qualities that I admire most about him. Um, You know, I have watched over the years people do the most horrific things and say the most terrible, awful things about my dad. I mean, publicly humiliate him, do all kinds of stuff. And you know what? He actually makes excuses for those people. He says, oh, they don't know what they're doing. They don't really mean it. It's not a big deal. He just forgives. He just forgives. You know, my dad walks out the scripture, Colossians 3.13. It says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. See, what my dad knew is that unforgiveness only hurts you. Doesn't hurt the the other person, it hurts you. Because in Mark 11.25, says, but when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. You know, because my dad was so forgiving and I just watched him live a life of forgiveness and really be unoffendable, I never had a problem knowing 
that my heavenly father would also forgive me. You know, I know many people think that when they mess up that they're scared to go run to the heavenly father because they're scared that their heavenly father's not going to forgive them. But my dad modeled that fathers forgive and they forgive quickly. You know, in 1 John 1, 9, it says, but if we confess our sins, he, the father, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so because my dad was so forgiving and that is just in his nature, it is just who he is, I had no problem knowing that my heavenly father was forgiving and that was in his nature. And I always knew all I had to do was run to the heavenly father and he would forgive me. So how to forgive is a great thing that my dad taught me. The second thing my dad taught me was how to forget. How to forget. You know, I often think forgetting is a skill that we overlook. Um, we can forgive, but it's not so easy to always forget. You know, I like one definition of the word forget. It means to disregard intentionally to disregard intentionally. What my dad knew is that in life, sometimes we would need to forget on purpose. You know, I remember being about 12 years old and you know, I was in that preteen phase and so uh, my dad had just started Rhema Bible Church and I was sitting in church one day and I heard somebody talking really negatively about my dad. I know, that's a shock that church people would talk about that about somebody, but it happened. Um, you know, they were talking really negatively. Oh, and it just made me so mad. And so, you know, that afternoon I said, Dad, you would not believe, you know, so-and-so was talking about you and they were saying this and that and that. And, you know, I was all upset and I was ready for him to be all upset. And he looked at me and said, oh, Denise, just forget about it and go on down the road. <laughs> Do you know how many times I have gone to my dad with something that somebody has done or somebody has said or some offense, and he says, looks at me and says, oh, just forget about it and go on down the road. <laughs> See, what he knew was that we are going to have to choose to forget intentionally in life if we want to let go of bitterness and be blessed. You know, it's easy to dwell on the negative. It's easy to dwell on those things that people have done us wrong. It's easy to grab onto that victim mentality, but we need to let go of that and grab onto a victor mentality. And we do that by forgetting the offenses. You know, I often say my dad has selective memory <laughs> because so many times, you know, we've been out to eat at a restaurant or, you know, shopping at the mall and people will walk up to my dad and say, oh, you know, Pastor Hagen, I, you know, I, I, I'm so glad I ran into you. Um, I, I just need to ask your forgiveness. And he always looks at them and says, for what? Like, he's shocked. Like, why are you asking my forgiveness? And so they'll go on and rec recount something that, you know, they said or they thought or they did against him. And he said, well, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even remember that. What a great thing in life. You know, I actually used to when I was young, I thought he had memory problems. Like, <laughs> like how do you not remember that? But... He was actually doing that on purpose. He was forgetting on purpose. <laughs> so he didn't have memory problems. But you know, another aspect of forgetting that my dad taught me is how to forget whenever I made mistakes. You know, I have a really hard time with that. I like to say that I'm a recovering perfectionist. Um, I pretty much expect myself to be perfect all the time, and I pretty much am my own worst critic. And so I struggle with forgetting the mistakes that I have made. And, you know, I remember being 19 years old and, you know, 
most 19 years old, they're, they're pretty dumb and they do dumb stuff, right? Um, so I had made a series of really bad choices and had gotten myself in some really bad situations. And, you know, um, it was just a, it was a really hard time in my life. And so, you know, of course I had messed up and, you know, I, I, I ran to my heavenly father and I said, you know, heavenly father, forgive me for that. And, you know, and I knew that God had forgiven me of that, but I had a hard time forgetting and it just, just constantly in thought life that just those, those bad decisions and bad choices just pounded in my head. And so finally one day I was talking to my dad and he brought me to this scripture and it literally changed my life. Philippians 3.13, it says, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. He told me, he said, you know, Denise, you can never get to where you're going in the future if you're constantly looking back at the past. He said, God has forgiven you. He's forgotten about it. So you just press forward and do that too. See, what my dad knew is the secret to pressing on and reaching towards those things in the future was intentionally forgetting those things in the past. You know, he modeled and showed me that sometimes we have to forget, just like our heavenly Father forgets. You know, God's mercies are new every morning. Amen, I'm so thankful for that, that we can wake up every day and God's mercies are new. In Psalms 103, verse 12 and 13, it says, he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. You know, God not only forgives, but he forgets. And my father taught me how to forgive and how to forget. But what my dad also taught me is how to fight. Now my dad is a, he's a fighter, all right? And I think, you know, all dads, want their children, whether it be male or female, to be able to defend themselves if something were happening, right? And so, you know, life is full of hard knocks and we not only have to know how to maybe sometimes fight physically, but also, you know, fight emotionally to keep ourselves up. My dad, one of my favorite memories of him is my dad taught me how to box. He taught me how to defend myself. He wanted his little girl, if I ever got in a situation, to know how to fight, to know how to throw a punch. And so this was actually really fun for me because, you know, he taught me how to make a fist and, you know, not put your thumbs in because that's how you break your thumb, you know. Taught me how to make a good fist and we would be in the kitchen. My mom would be cooking dinner and he would say, come on, Denise, come on, let's box, let's box. And he would hold up his hands and he, you know, he would teach me how to box. And so he would say, harder, harder. And it was just really, really fun. And so he taught me all the things of how to defend myself. Well, one day I actually used that skill. <laughs> now, my, da my dad was, said, you know, Denise, now never, ever, ever start a fight. But if somebody throws the first punch, you come back swinging. And I was like, okay, dad, I'll do it. So, you know, one day I was in the ninth grade and uh, we had gym class and we had been playing basketball and there was this girl that was really good at basketball and like, I kind of like broke her ankles and, you know, scoring up on her and that made her really mad. So in the locker room, she decided that she was going to start a fight with me, okay? I know I don't look like a fighter, but I'm a really good fighter. <laughs> and uh, so she pretty much misjudged me. So, you know, I'm, I'm start to, you know, change out of my gym clothes and so I turned around and all of a sudden she threw a punch and I staggered back and hit the lockers. Well, immediately, all the things my dad taught me 
instantly came back and I came off of those lockers and I started swinging. And one thing that my dad taught me that I forgot to mention is that he said, you know, when you punch somebody in the face, you don't just punch their nose, you punch all the way through to the back of their head. <laughs> so, being the good daughter that I am, I was just obeying what my dad told me. Let's just say I won that fight. However, I did end up in the principal's office. But, uh, and actually funny into that story that I was in the principal's office and the principal called, he said, well, I'm gonna call your parents. I said, call my dad. And so, <laughs> which probably kind of shocked him. Probably not many students say, call my dad. But I said, call my dad. And so the principal was telling my dad. And so the principal handed the phone to me and said, your dad wants to talk to you. And so I said, hey, dad. He, he asked me one question. He said, baby, did you start the fight? I said, no, dad, I didn't. He said, did you win the fight? Yes, dad, I did. He said, okay, good. You're not in trouble. Now, you may be in trouble with the school, but you're not in trouble with me. Now, let me talk to the principal. <laughs> So anyways, yeah, that's how that went. But he taught me how to fight, all right? That's the only fight I've ever been in. Um, but my dad knew that fighting was not only a natural principle, but it was also a supernatural one as well. You know, over in 1 Timothy 6, 12, it says, fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. Also over in 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9, it says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. You know, anyone who knows my dad, can quote his famous quote, I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. See, my dad knew that in this life, we're not just fighting in the natural, but we're fighting the enemy in the realm of the spirit. And just like that we have to learn how to defend ourselves in the natural, we have to learn to defend ourselves in the spiritual against our enemy, right? And so over in Ephesians 6, 12, it says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly, heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. You know, we know that we have to fight the enemy with the sword of the spirit, and that is the word of God. My dad taught me, just like he taught me to box in the natural, he taught me in the supernatural that you never go into the fight, into a fight with the devil without the word of God. You never go into a battle with the enemy silent. You go into that battle speaking the word of God, knowing the word of God, quoting the word of God, and you knock the devil off his feet with the word of God. That's how we fight in the spiritual. Because what do we know? We know that we always triumphed through Jesus Christ our Lord, that we have the victory, amen? And we have to fight the devil with our words and with the word of God. Amen. I watched my dad many, many, many times, many times, the enemy would throw things his way. And you know what? Never one time, never one time did I ever see my dad feel sorry for himself. Not one time. I never saw him, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, such a bad situation. Not one time. Anytime the devil put him in a corner, man, he just came out fighting with tenacity with the word of God. 
because he knows that we have the victory and we always triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have to fight. My dad taught me how, and I'm so thankful for that. So my dad taught me how to forgive, taught me how to forget. He taught me how to fight, but my dad also taught me how to follow. You know, my dad, he's always, we, we have this thing between him and I, so I call him the block, and I'm the chip off the old block. So I call him block, and he calls me chip. And, you know, my dad is such a, a, a strong pillar of strength, and he is just, he's just so strong, and I just feel so safe when I'm with him. And I remember being a little girl, and I remember, you know, I, I grew up, uh, you know, my brother and I, we had a very unusual childhood. We didn't know what an unusual childhood we had until we got older and realized that other people didn't have that type of childhood. Um, but, you know, we grew up traveling literally all over the world um, in motorhomes and airplanes. I mean, you know, honestly, I don't even know half the places that I've been. I have to ask my older brother, you know, hey, Craig, have I been to this place? And he'll tell me, yeah, I remember that's when this happened. I, I remember it by memories and what happened, not so much by the place, you know, the state or the country that we were in. And so growing up, I remember being, you know, six and seven and eight years old, and we traveled constantly, and we'd be in airplanes, and a lot of times we'd have really tight connections, so we'd get into a major airport like DFW or Chicago, and we would literally have to run to make our connection, and so, you know, of course, I was the littlest and, you know, had the littlest legs, and so we would be running and my dad would look at me and say, Denise, listen to me. You stay right behind me. You follow me through this crowd. This is a crowded airport. You stay right behind me. And as long as you're right behind me and you can see me, you're going to be okay and we're going to get there and we're going to make it. So I say, okay, daddy, you know, and I mean, I would just be going as fast as I could and he'd be looking back. And if I got too far back, he'd say, Denise, come on, catch up, catch up. You have to stay right behind me. That's where you're safe. And so I learned how to follow him. You know, um, when we were, my family, we used to ride three and four wheelers. Um, and so we went to this place called Little Sahara. It's in Oklahoma. And it's these huge, like, desert sand dunes, okay, in Oklahoma. And, and so um, I always rode right behind him because he, because I was the littlest, he wanted to make sure that I was safe. And so he would always say, you know, hey, stay right behind me. Whatever I do, wherever I go, you do the same thing. And he said, look, if we're going over with a sharp turn, and he said, and I lean one way, you lean that way. You follow me in whatever I do. I said, okay, Dad, I will. And so, man, I mean, we would ride through the trails of that of Little Sahara, and I would just follow him, and I would follow him, and, you know, he was always encouraging me, like, if I got a little behind, he'd stop, and he'd wait for me, and he would clap and say, you know, come on, because we had on all the riding gear, and so even when it got really scary, he taught me how to follow him, even when I didn't want to follow him because it just looked way too scary, he stopped and taught me. You know, um, at Little Sahara, they had these huge, mount, like mountainous sand dunes. And I mean, you were just basically going like straight up. And you know, I was following him, following him, and he just went straight up the sand dune and I would just stop and think. And he would turn around and I was shaking my head no, like I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, Dad, that's too scary because it felt like you were just gonna fall backwards, you know? And so he'd ride back down and he would say, come on, come on, baby, you can do it, you can do it. And I'm like, dad, I can't, it's too steep. I can't do it, I'm gonna fall over. He's like, no, you're not, come on, do it. And so he would do it again and I was like, nope, not doing it. And he would ride back down and he would say, come on. He's like, 
I promise you nothing's going to happen as long as you just stay right behind me. You don't let off the throttle. You go as fast as you can. If you stay right behind me, I promise you I will get, you will get to the top. Trust me. So I'd say, okay, Dad, I will. And even though I was so scared, I mean, man, I would just, I would just go as fast as I could as fast as I could, and we would get to the top, and he would celebrate, and then we'd keep going. And the reason why that is so significant is because what it taught me is that if I could trust my earthly father, that he wasn't going to let anything happen to me, that he could see up ahead, that he could see the future, it taught me how to follow my heavenly father. That when things got tough and when things got difficult, that I could trust my heavenly father, that he had my best interest in mind and he was not going to let anything happen to me because my heavenly father cares way more about me than my earthly father does. My dad taught me how to follow. And what a great lesson that that is. Because when we follow our heavenly father, we know that we will be successful in life. You know, John 10, 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice and they follow me. They follow me. You know, in life, we have to follow Jesus. Even when it looks difficult, even when it's scary, and even when we can't see the future. You know, I know when I was 23 years old, I had an event happen in my life and my entire world shattered. There were days when I would wake up and I wish that I wasn't even alive. I was absolutely broken. And so I really didn't know how I was gonna get past it, but my dad was right there. And he sat down with me and he said, I want to bring you to Jeremiah 29, 11. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And he told me, baby, just like you used to follow me on that three-wheeler when we were at Little Sahara, and remember when it got scary and you didn't think that you could make it and you didn't think that you could trust me and you just didn't want to do it, but you followed me anyway and you were okay. He said, if you'll just trust, even though you can't see the future, if you can just trust your heavenly father like you did me, I promise you, I promise you, he'll take you to the other side. And you know what? He did. He did. My dad taught me the most important lesson in life, and that is to follow my heavenly father wherever he takes me. You know, learning how to forgive, learning how to forget, learning how to fight, and learning how to follow are just a few of the lessons that my dad not only taught me, but he lived out in front of me. You know, research is very clear that children as young as 14 months of age start to imitate the actions of the adults in their home. And that by two years of age, children are much more likely to copy the behavior of their mom and dad rather than what they are told to do. Research also concludes that children will imitate the actions of adults in their home, and that will influence not only their conduct, but the way that they understand and relate to the world. So fathers, I simply want to ask you today, what are your actions teaching your children? Dads, how are you influencing the way that your children will understand and relate to the world? Dads, what are you teaching your children about the heavenly father and what he looks like? Because as an earthly father, 
your reflection of our Heavenly Father? Are you modeling the actions and the attitudes and behaviors of our Heavenly Father? I can't answer those questions. Only you can. If you haven't been doing the best job, that's okay. You can change at any time. It just takes one decision. It's real simple. And if you have been doing a great job, then I encourage you to keep doing that. Keep modeling those lessons for your children. Fathers, as you reflect on that today, if you don't mind standing, I would just love to pray for you. So if you would please stand if you're a father. I just want to pray for you. Because fathers, you're important. You're the leader in your home. And you're so important in the lives of your children. How your children view their heavenly father is what you do. Because how that you act, how that you behave, the decisions that you make are supposed to emulate our heavenly father. And how your children see the heaven, how, how your children see you is how that they will see the heavenly father. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for every single dad in this room. Father, that you would help them. Lord, fathers play such an important role in our lives. And I know, Father, that that is a heavy burden to carry. But thank you, Lord, that you have graced each father to be able to carry that and to be able to emulate you and your attitudes and your actions and your behaviors to their children. Father, help these fathers on a daily basis in practical ways lead their children, teach their children to follow you. And Father, for those fathers who have adult children, help them to love their adult children and to be there for them. And Father, I just ask you for strength. I ask you for wisdom. I ask that the Holy Spirit just search each of these fathers today. And Lord, that you would reveal to them if there's anything they need to change, any words they've been speaking that they need to change, any actions or attitudes that they have that need to change, Father, that you would just show them and just help them to make that adjustment and to make that change so that they can be the best possible father. Thank you for it in the name of Jesus, amen.